All right. Thank you, everyone, and welcome. Um, I am Megan Moreno. I'm a water use efficiency specialist with ACWD, and today we have helping Renee and Roxanne from our team uh, who've helped put this webinar series together. You you can see from the slide we've been um, hosting webinars each day, so thank you to those of you who have been joining along with us. Um, this is our first lunchtime webinar series on finding and fixing leaks in honor of Fix a Leak Week. And today is the last day um, and it's hosted around irrigation systems. I'd like to provide a little bit of background on uh, Fix a Leak Week and explain a bit about why we're here hosting these webinars this week. The Alameda County Water District or ACWD has been an environmental uh, protection agency or EPA water sense promotional partner for over seven years. We are happy to promote their national fix a leak week campaign because it brings awareness to the importance of finding and fixing leaks. Water is very precious resource and leaks are a big water waster. Reducing leaks and water use is especially important right now due to the dry conditions locally and statewide. And in fact, ACWD has declared a water shortage emergency in December 2021 due to constraints on several of our water supplies and concerns about continuing dry conditions into 2022 and beyond. So we're in another drought and preventing water waste is critical right now. So for today's program, we'll first go over the format of the webinar. So I'll first provide a background, a bit of background on ECWD, explain some of our water use efficiency programs and our drought actions, including what is restricted right now and how to get more information from the drought um, to you. And then we'll show a few how-to videos uh, from other EPA WaterSense partners. And at the end, there'll be plenty of time for question and answer. And so let's kick it off with some logistics today. Um, there is a Q&A box in which you can put your questions in because attendees are in listen only mode. Uh, so when you have a question, please put them there and we'll do the best of our ability to answer questions after the how-to clips. And closed captioning is also available if you click on the live transcript section that you see at the bottom of your screen. So now for a little bit uh, more about ACWD. We um, were founded in 1914 and we serve over 357,000 customers with 84,000 connections. And we serve Fremont, Newark and Union City, which make up about 105 square miles of service area. Uh, we do have three different sources of supply, which makes us a unique and um, diverse water supply portfolio. And you can see the sources there in the graph. We offer several programs for our uh, customers to take advantage of, including a uh, turf removal rebate, we offer free water conservation kits with leak detection tablets, rain barrel rebates, irrigation hardware rebates, um, ratio smart sprinkler controller rebates, and uh, assistance to low income or income qualified residents in our service area. I think it's a really great time to take advantage of some of these programs as some of the values have increased uh, due to the drought conditions. So for example, our turf removal rebate was increased to $2 per square foot from $1 uh, just as extra incentive to get uh, that grass, high intensity water using grass out. As mentioned, we have declared a water uh, use emergency and we have an ordinance. And so basically we did that because ordinary water use de demand will be approximately 15% greater than available if demand continues as it was. So the water shortage emergency ordinance was developed to achieve a 15% reduction through mandatory conservation measures. And that doesn't require very efficient customers to reduce by 15, but it does require all customers to stop water waste, minimize irrigation and curb other non-essential uses. So for outdoor irrigation days, this is important, especially for our irrigation system themed webinar today. Um, 
if you are using spray irrigation, anything overhead that goes through the air, these are the number of irrigation days that we are allowing per day or per uh, month. So for example, in the month of March, there's one irrigation day allowed per week. Uh, we do allow for an additional irrigation day for customers that may be uh, managing a park or something like recreation. But if customers follow these guidelines, then we will be able to reduce our water use by 15% um, overall. So we really, really are pushing folks to be aware of the number of allowed irrigation days and comply with the ordinance to follow. Some additional things that are prohibited are, you know, irrigating, um, which causes runoff and ponding, refilling, swimming, emptying and refilling swimming pools and using uh, decorative water fountains. Um, some additional things that are prohibited include um, using your irrigation system after there's been precipitation in the air, like rain. And uh, there are some exceptions to this, which includes drip irrigation, or if you're establishing a water efficient landscape. And of course we prioritize water for trees. So we do um, wanna keep the vitality of the trees around here. And if you'd like more information, uh, if you go to our website, acwd.org, you'll find that you can get to the drought page and be able to report water waste. If you see a violation happening, please let us know. We can um, include it and um, investigate and make sure that we can curb those wasteful activities. So have, if you have any questions about what I just explained, please put them in the Q&A um, because we will be switching gears into our how-to video section now. So the first video I'm going to show you is um, titled How to Check Your Sprinklers for Leaks and Inefficiencies, and it's pr produced by our uh, friends at the City of Santa Barbara, who are also WaterSense um, promotional partners. And uh, these videos are intended to be general in nature. And so just as a disclaimer, these videos were created by other WaterSense promotional partners. We thank them for their contribution. The instructors in these videos are, uh, the instructions in these videos are general guidelines. ACWD is not responsible for any damage to your home, landscape, or appliances from the following procedures in these videos. If you have concerns doing any of the work by yourself, you may wish to seek services of a professional plumber or contractor. This video presentation is general in nature. It's not intended to be an exhaustive review of the subject matter. The presentation information and materials are provided as a courtesy to participants or not endorsed by ACWD. All right, so with that, our first video is again, um, how to check your sprinklers for leaks and inefficiencies. So sit back and enjoy. Hi, I'm Kathy Pere. I'm with the City of Santa Barbara's Water Conservation Department. Today we're going to look for leaks in a sprinkler system. One of the first steps to do before you turn the irrigation on is to do a walkabout. Try and look and see if there's any unusual, inefficient water issues that you might see. Brown spots, dead areas, super green areas, and moss. If we see in this corner over here, we actually have moss, which is indicative of too much water, poor drainage in this area, and it just shouldn't be here, especially during the warm months. Another thing to look for that happens fairly often is the seals around the top of the sprinklers. They're rubber and they'll leak. So you need to take a close look at just the top part of the sprinkler and see if there's water settling in or if you see it gurgling out from around the sides. It's an easy fix. Either replace the little rubber seal that's inside or if the water's leaking because it's at the bottom of a hill, they have little tiny rubber seals called check valves you can put in and that'll stop the water from draining out at the bottom of the hill. 
as we're going through and doing our site evaluation, you might want to have a piece of paper, mark down where your valves are, and then as you're going around and testing the valves, put down where each of the zones are. Right now, we're going to check that backyard. I'm going to take a look at it. If I see any problems, I'll stick a flag next to it because it's always hard to find when you turn the sprinkler back off. This is always a good time to really look at your valves and make sure that they're not leaking anywhere around where the threaded areas are or where the solenoid is on the top of. So the sprinklers are on and they actually have pretty good coverage. The water's throwing from one head to the next head. But what I'm noticing is there's that misting happening. And the misting is water that's too much pressure coming through this and it's actually evaporating off and it's not making it to the surface. It's easy to address it by putting a pressure regulator on the system. Another thing to look for while you're looking for leaks is when the plant material has grown up over your sprinkler heads. What happens with that is that the sprinklers try and throw the water out, but it doesn't make it out here and you end up with a brown spot. I'm gonna mark this area and you can see the sprinkler is way down underneath here. So I'm going to mark this area so that I know to come back and make some adjustments, either move the sprinkler or move and prune that plant. Wow, we turned on the next section and, and this is what we found. I think we should turn it off. Can you turn it off, please? So as we check this one, what we can see is uh, the guts to the sprinkler are missing. Definitely going to be in need of repair. In fact, I think it's completely broken. We're going to actually have to replace this whole head. So it's good, once again, to mark where it's at and then come back out with a shovel, a flat bottom shovel. You're going to dig around it so that you can unscrew that sprinkler head, get a new one, screw it back on the riser, and then it should work fine. And one of the very most obvious things to look for is green versus brown. If you look in an area that you know you have sprinklers in and one section is nice and green, it looks like it has good coverage, and then you take a look and you see a section that doesn't appear to be getting even water coverage, first thing to look for is what's up with the sprinkler over there. You could have a broken pipe underground. You could have roots that have wrapped around and stopped the flow. It could be a failed sprinkler. On this one, what we've found is this particular sprinkler is not coming up at all. I'm going to mark it with a flag so that I know when I come to do my repairs that I need to address this particular issue. When it's repaired, we should have an even coverage of water and everything should be healthy again. I'm going to give you all a close-up of what a sprinkler body looks like. Most times it's underground, so you don't know what the guts look like. Sprinklers are composed of a body that attaches to your main water. There's a little riser that screws into it. It's just a channel for the water. Inside of the body, there is the pop-up mechanism that's on a spring. This is called a check valve, just a little rubber washer that stops water from going back down the pipe. And then when it's all together, you just have a nozzle, and that's what directs the water where you want it in your landscape. This is something that everybody can do. When you have two sprinkler heads on a zone that one is working and one isn't, a lot of times it could be a problem with the actual PVC pipe between those two sprinkler heads. What you need to do is to try and use a screwdriver or a soil probe and track down where it's the wettest. And unfortunately, you need to dig. Working in your irrigation system, is wet work, it's muddy work, but you can learn to repair things like a PVC break by going on our website and watching a couple of the videos that we have for you. It can be done, it's inexpensive, good luck, enjoy yourself, play in the sprinklers. Okay, next video we have to how to check your drip system for leaks.
it's it's important to be sure with your drip line that you flush all the debris that might be in the in the pipes out before your summer watering season. Find the end of your pipe, the part with the figure eight on it, open that up, open the pipe, and then let it run for one to two minutes. All right, we're going to turn the water on here. Take a look at this drip line and see if we see any geysers or uh, broken emitters or cut pipes. Aha, we got a geyser here. We got to make sure we flag that because when we turn the water off, we're not going to know where on that drip pipe the leak is. So let's take a peek, see if we find anything else. All right, you can see here, we've definitely got a hole in the drip tubing. All right, let's flag it. We'll come back and repair it when the water's off. All right, now that the water's off, we've got our flag here so we know where the problem is. We've got our little first aid kit in that. It's got some extra emitters. It's got some goof plugs to fix holes in a connector, all the tools we might need. So let's pull this out pull the mulch away, see what we've got here. We have an emitter here and it looks like it just lost its top. So in my first aid kit, I always have a few extra parts. This particular one just needs a little flag. So we're gonna put that back in here and there we go. That flag emitter is fixed. It's now gonna drip just one gallon per hour. For this repair, we're gonna use a goof plug. There's a hole here and there's no plant. So we don't need any watering. So what we do, these little guys, this is a goof plug. You're going to put the small end into the hole that's in that tubing that's watering where there's no plants. I like to hold on to it with a little pliers, makes it a little easier for me. Take it, push it into the tubing, and there you go, it's fixed. Let's turn the water on and check our repair, make sure it doesn't leak. Our repair is good, there's no water. Just give a quick example of what happens when you get a shovel cut in your drip line. Roots from plants will actually grow into your drip line and block the water flow. So instead of climbing up on the slope here and show you how to repair, we're just going to take two pieces of drip pipe as if we'd cut it with our shovel and then we're going to reconnect it together. You need a simple connector and a little bit of elbow grease. You'll feel it catch and there you go, it's attached. It needs to connect to the other end so that you'll have a full tube. Same thing, using your connector and the empty piece of a pipe. Slowly kind of get it in. There's a little bit of a barb in there, so you have to work it back and forth. Connected. That's all there is to it. You can repair that yourself. All right, some very informative videos today. So I hope that you enjoyed them. Um, and, you know, each system is a little different. So be sure to uh, take caution when you're doing any of the repairs suggested. Um, one other announcement I'd like to make is about the uh, automated metering infrastructure. So if you have questions, go ahead and be putting them in the Q&A while I'm explaining this. But um, Basically, ACWD is installing advanced metering infrastructure in the entire service area over the next two years. And there'll be about, there's actually already 10% of meters already out there. So you may be one of the lucky ones that already has one, but all ACWD customers will eventually have access to a customer portal where you can set up your own uh, leak alerts, track your consumption and find information about ACWDs water use efficiency programs. Um, these are new meters and their portal will be very helpful for finding and fixing leaks. So look out for more information in the near future about these new meters. And if you have questions now, feel free to contact us. Uh, again, it's super important to focus on fixing leaks, especially during this drought. There are more webs, there are more resources on the ACWD and EPA website and as always, you can contact us if you have any questions. Um, after we close today, you can see our phone number and email on the screen, as well as some of the resources that we were discussing. Um, so yeah, we do have about five minutes for questions. So please put them in the chat, or excuse me, the Q&A, if you have any.
Okay, we have some questions coming in. Thank you. So the first question is, can I report water waste anonymously? And the answer is yes. So on our website, we do have a report waste um, form and the name and contact information is optional. So you're welcome to include your email address or phone number so we can contact you if we need more information, but it is not required at all. And um, you will be protected by uh, anonymity. All right, the second question is, because rain is expected tomorrow, any suggestions for those of us with automatic irrigation systems? Great question, yeah. So when it is uh, raining, you're gonna get all the precipitation you need from the air and you do not need to use your irrigation system. So uh, if you have a, uh, even older controllers should have a rain sensor where you can flip on and off. And that's kind of the more mechanical uh, type irrigation system um, because again you can just shut it off and then it and when you flip that switch back it'll go back to your regular programming um, but if you have an automatic irrigation system you can override your program so basically um, several smart controllers that we offer in our rebate programs do this automatically for example we offer a huge discount on a Rachu smart sprinkler controller that um, automatically senses the rain and will shut your uh, irrigation system off for that day, which is a really great um, tool for people that, you know, want to let the weather decide their irrigation patterns. Um, so please look out for that and um, try and install one in your home. It's really easy and it's a great discount that we provide. But um, if you do have one of those, you can go into the settings and let them know that the it's raining tomorrow during this time and it should adjust your irrigation system for you. And the next question is why can't decorative fountains be used if they recycle the same water? So uh, yes, as mentioned in our uh, ordinance, all fountains are um, prohibited. Uh, even if they recycle the water, they're is water lost due to evaporation and wind. Um, and it's a really good way to demonstrate that there is a drought and that um, we need to take measures seriously. So if someone sees an empty fountain, they're reminded that, okay, we're, we're, saving, we're in saving water mode. Um, so even though water is recycled, it does need to be often topped off because of evaporation. So we wanna, reduce that water there. Next question is, if I want to replace plants such as rose bushes or other shrubbery with more water efficient ones, does the rebate apply to that as well? There's no lawn in that area, just a bunch of rocks. Okay, so the great question. Um, ACWD's rebate is really designed to get the maximum water savings benefit. And so we require turf be replaced with water efficient landscape. Um, that, that's for several reasons, because turf is often irrigated with overhead sprinklers, whereas rose bushes or shrubbery may have bubblers or drip system already. Um, so that that's a more efficient way of watering to, to begin. So while we encourage, we highly encourage you to install more water efficient plants and upgrade to a more efficient water watering system, uh, the rebate itself is just for turf replacement. Next question, thank you. Um, for outdoor water fountain. Okay, for outdoor water fountain can only run twice a week. Um, so for all, all fountains are prohibited to be running, but for outdoor irrigation, um, we ask that customers limit their schedule to one time per week. Um, and that varies throughout the, the year. So back in February, uh, we we're asking people to irrigate once every other week. And then during the summer months, um, I think that begins in June, you can water twice a week, but for March, April, and May, we ask that you only run your irrigation uh, for once, once a week. And that's for a spray sprinkler overhead irrigation. 
Thank you for your question. Um, the question, the next question is, does the rebate apply to purchasing new irrigation hardware? All these questions are coming in. They're so great. Thank you so much for your participation. Um, we have a separate rebate for irrigation hardware. Um, so if you're buying efficient devices and not participating in the water efficient landscape rebate, we do have an incentive for you to buy the most efficient irrigation hardware. However, if you are participating in the lawn conversion program, we do um, accept irrigation equipment as part of the rebate materials that we would rebate. And feel free to contact any of our staff. We're happy to answer more detailed questions on how those rebates work. All right, I'll take one last question. Um, are there other water features like waterfalls or man-made ponds prohibited? So the ordinance text does state um, fountains, but it's really, we're looking for um, things that are non-essential, right? So if a, a, a man-made pond has fish or other wildlife in it, um, that would not be considered a fountain, but um, we encourage you to reach out so we can discuss more of the details and determine what type of waste may be occurring. And if there's any uh, upgrades that could be more efficient. Okay, well, that was today's last uh, session of this week. Thank you so much for participating with us today. All of these webinars will be posted to our website and you should be receiving a survey um, of questions about today's webinar. You can also put in a Wordle if you got the correct guess. And um, one thing that you'll definitely wanna do when that survey pops up is put in your service address, because if you live in a CWD service area, we want to send you a free gift for registering for these webinars. All right, everyone, thank you so much, and I appreciate you being water wise, and go find and fix those leaks. Thank you.